Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com, VisionRecordingStudios.com, and here on my YouTube channel. And today we're doing another Universal Audio Plugin Series plugin review. And this week we're going to take a look at the LA3A compressor, which is kind of the uh, the sister compressor, if you will, to the LA2A, which we looked at a few weeks ago. So let's take a look at the LA3A. It's a pretty simple compressor, and we're going to take a, a little history lesson on the LA3A, talk about the controls and how they work, and then ultimately bring us into the DAW and listen to a couple of sound examples so you can kind of see uh, what the LA3A can do for um, specific tracks. So like with all my universal audio plugin reviews, I like to do a little bit of a history lesson, especially when we're talking about analog vintage plugins and, um, and it's in, in, you know, the hardware that they're, that they're emulating, because I think it's important that when you're using these analog vintage plugins, a lot of uh, newbies to using vintage analog hard, um, hardware plugin emulations, um, really don't understand where the hardware came from. They don't maybe have never had an opportunity to work with the actual hardware. And so they're, they're, they just take these vintage plugins and slap them on a mix and think because they slap them on a mix automatically, everything is going to sound great. And I think it's important to learn not only the history about each one of these plugins and where it kind of came from, um, but then also um, how to use them properly um, because they are, they all have their unique uh, way in the way they work. So Anyway, so our little history lesson and facts uh, here, the LA-3 was made by Teletronics in 1969. They're also the maker of the LA-2A. Uh, this is a solid state optical gain reduction design, which is different from the LA-2A tube design. Okay, so the LA-2A has a tube design uh, for gain reduction, and this is a solid state. So that's the basic differences between the two. The LA-3A also has a faster attack and release time than the LA-2A. The LA-2 has more of a slower attack and release. Um, and when you look at the LA-2 collection uh, review that we did a few weeks ago, you'll see there's three different versions of the LA-2, and they all have slightly different uh, attack and release times associated with each one of those particular pieces of hardware. Um, but the LA-3, there's only one compressor in this particular collection, and it has a faster attack and release time. Um, it was modeled using one of Universal Audio's personal vintage LA three way LA three A hardware in their collection. So this plugin was modeled by Universal Audio, obviously, and it's actually the unit, the hardware unit, came from their personal collection. Um, it was first released on the UAD one platform, which is, but it is also now available on the UAD two platform. Um, I'm not sure of the year of the release. I couldn't get that off of Universal Audio's website, but I know it was back, I believe, with the UAD-1 because I believe I had that plug-in back in those days. And it's commonly used on guitars and drums, but also can sound great on vocals. And we'll take a listen to some on a female vocal today as, as well as some acoustic guitar and electric guitar. Um, and the control features are almost exact to the LA-2A compressor. So once you know how to use the LA-2A, you can use the LA-3A, so, but they sound a little bit different and they both have a different um, sound characteristic to them. So let's talk about the basic controls and then we'll go into the actual uh, DAW and take a look at one um, up close. Um, so we have a compressor limiter uh, switch, which um, the switch uh, changes the characteristics of the compressor's I.O. curve. When it's set to compressor, the curve is more gentle and it presents low compression ratio. When it's set to limit, there's a high compression ratio used. So typically I would use this, and most people use this, I believe, in the compressor setting where it's more of a gentle curve, has a lower uh, uh, ratio, more like a two to one, four to one. Um, but if you wanted a higher ratio and you wanted higher levels of compression, you would switch the, you would flip the toggle switch over to the limit and therefore you'll have a higher compression ratio. The gain knob adjusts the output level up uh, by 50 dB. So you want to make sure that you adjust the gain control after you um, adjust the desired amount of compression by using the peak reduction knob. Uh, this is achieved with the peak construction control. The gain control does not affect the amount of compression. So think of the gain as a makeup gain. So we're going to use the peak reduction knob to dial in how much compression we want, and then that's going to reduce the volume of the track, obviously, and then we're going to make up that volume loss with the gain. And then lastly, we have a peak uh, reduction dial. This controls uh, this control adjusts the amount of gain reduction as well as the relative threshold. The peak reduction value of zero yields no compression. If you rotate uh, clockwise until the desired amount of compression is achieved, to monitor the peak reduction, set the UV meter to gain reduction, and the peak reduction should be adjusted independently from the gain control. Okay. 
So now we're going to go take a look at the DAW. We're going to take a look at some sound samples, and then we're going to take an up look close at the LA-3A. So stay tuned for that. Okay, welcome to our DAW session here, and today we're going to look at the LA-3A on an acoustic guitar. We're going to look at it on an electric guitar, kind of a clean electric guitar sound, and also a female vocal. So here is the LA-3A up close and personal, and I will zoom in on this on the screen because the GUI is somewhat small, which is one of the things I don't like about the universal audio version of this. Uh, maybe one day they will remodel this and it will uh, have a bigger GUI. <laughs> so anyhow, just like the LA-2A's counterpart, um, we have, and uh, we'll go over the controls one last time, on the left-hand side here to the UV meter, we have the gain uh, knob, which is, again, is a makeup gain. Um, to the, in the center here, we have the UV meter, which is, um, which will display how much gain reduction we have, or uh, output, if we use this toggle switch down here in the bottom left-hand corner, below the gain knob, we have the uh, gain reduction with the toggle switch in the center. If we switch it over to output, it will, the UV meter will display the output signal, and if we shut it off, it will bypass the plug-in altogether. Okay, and we'll leave it on gain reduction. To the right of the UV meter, we have the peak reduction, which again, the higher you turn up the peak reduction, the more compression we're gonna get, and then we're gonna make up that volume loss with the gain on the left. And then over here in the bottom right-hand corner, we have the toggle switch between compressor and limiter. So again, compressing on the compressor setting, it's gonna be more of a gentle curve and more of a lower ratio, maybe a two to one, four to one, six to one type of a ratio. When you flip it over to limiting, you're going to get more of a higher ratio uh, setting of more maybe uh, 8 to 1, 12 to 1, 20 to 1 type of a ratio. Okay, so typically I would leave this on compression because typically I'm looking for just gentle um, types of compression, controlled compression, not really looking to squash anything. Um, if I was going to do some heavy duty kind of compression, like in a parallel compression type mode, I would use something like an 1176 style, which we did a review on last week um, on the YouTube channel. So right now, let's just take a quick listen to this acoustic guitar with no compression at all. I'm going to turn it off. Okay, so we have, with no compression there, some strummed, heavy strumming acoustic guitar with some, uh, some light picking uh, after that strumming passage. And with the strumming section, you can see by uh, the audio waveform here, which is above the LA-3A, um, you can see that we have a pretty dynamic uh, section of music here, and then it gets a little bit more um, delicate here afterwards. And this will be a good example to show you what the LA-3A can do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on to gain reduction mode. Uh, we're going to start with the peak reduction all the way down, and we'll just keep the gain right at number five at the 12 o'clock position, and we will go ahead and play back this passage, and I'll start to dial in some compression. Typically on an LA-3A, the sweet spot for me seems to be somewhere between 5 and 7 dB of compression, usually is the sweet spot. Every analog piece of gear in its hardware form tends to have a different sweet spot. You have to experiment with it on different instrumentation to see where does the compressor sound its best. And to me, it tends to sound its best right around that 5 dB mark, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, and um, what you really want to try to pay attention to is more of the tonality of the upper mid-range where when you engage the compressor, the sound kind of opens up a little bit, as well as obviously controlling the peaks and the transients. So let's just take a listen to this and we'll dial up some peak reduction and see what we get. Okay, it's always a good idea when you're turning up the peak reduction. Once we've kind of got some compression happening, you can see I'm flipping between the off, which will bypass the compressor and gain reduction with this toggle switch. because so I want to make sure that I'm level matching the plug-in. And what that basically means is before the overall volume level that you hear back in your headphones or in your monitors, that overall volume should be relatively the same, as close as you can get it when the compressor is off versus when it's on. So you're not getting um, a big volume drop or increase because um, that kind of will play kind of tricks on our ears to thinking that, you know, the louder section will always sound better. So if you level match the volume level, you tend to get a more accurate representation of what is the compressor really doing. So again, we're listening for 
tone, but we're all also listening for the transients to kind of smooth out. So right now we're on gain reduction. So hopefully what you can hear there, what I hear there is in during the strumming passages, the heavier handed passages, um, when you engage the compressor, what happens is those big transients, especially on the downbeat on the one where they really hit that first hit really hard, that kind of tames that transient a little bit and kind of smooths out the performance, which is great. And it also gives a little bit more of an upper mid range, kind of opens up just a tiny bit. It's kind of subtle. This is a little bit more of a transparent uh, sounding compressor as compared to something like the LA-2A where you hear the real sizzle from the tubes. Um, this, because it's a solid state compressor, has a little bit more of a transparent feel to it or tonality to it, but there is a little bit of an upper mid-range bump, it sounds like. When we get to the quieter passages where it's more picked, like I don't, it's not finger picked, it sounds like it's being played with a pick, but the more picking style, again, you can hear with the compressor coming, being engaged, that those notes are more even. So any of the quieter notes are kind of bringing, kind of coming up in level and the overall volume level of those pick notes are kind of standing more out in front. So they're a little bit more solid sounding. So again, I'll play back that passage from the beginning without, and then I will play it on the second time with it in and you can hear the difference. This is with no compression. Hear that real, the one coming in really heavy. We're going to go with some compression now. Okay, so hopefully you'll hear the difference and we'll toggle back and forth in a couple of different sections here, but that picking per part of the of the passage is a lot more even sounding. You don't lose any of the notes. The notes are more solid, more even, um, and that's what this compressor or any compressor will do. But again, it adds a little bit of tone character to it, um, but it really evens out the performance really nice. And again, on this heavy strum section, let's try to find that. Right there, those da da. Da, those that section right there listen to it let's just loop that one little section here and i will toggle it on and off so you can really hear how the compressor kind of tames that transient no compression with compression so it's not quieter, but it really tames that transient. It really grabs that peak and it squashes it down really nice, but it doesn't sound compressed. It sounds smooth. It sounds even. No compression. Okay, pretty obvious, right? Hopefully you can hear that. That's pretty obvious. Let's hear a little bit of this picking pattern again, and then we'll move over to another instrument. Let's listen to this. No compression. Here comes the compressor. No compression. Compression.
So you hear how the note with the compressor is more solid sounding. You can hear all the notes on with and without the compressor, but without the compressor, it doesn't sound as solid. It just it, this this makes it it makes it with the compression engaged. It feels like he picked those notes at a lot more of a closer of the same velocity, if that makes any sense. So the notes just sounds more solid. It's more solid of a performance. So that's what it does on an acoustic guitar. Now let's take a listen. Uh, we will mute this and let's see if we can take a listen to an electric guitar in the same section, maybe. Try to get to a, something that's a little bit different. Okay, so here's a clean electric guitar strummed. Um, let's see if we turn it off. Let's see what we got. Now with compression. So just like with the acoustic guitar, it really tames those transients on, on the downbeat of the one where he really hits that strum pretty hard. It really tames them nice. And again, on the electric guitar, it's a little more obvious to me that you have a little bit more of a mid-range open up. Um, so it does a really nice job uh, in that respect. So again, it's, it's subtle from a tonality point of view, but from a compression point of view, it works really well. So it's a nice way to add some nice, even control compression that doesn't sound compressed, that just kind of smooths out a performance and just adds a little bit of character. Um, so that's what's really nice about the LA-3A on an electric guitar. Now let's take a look at uh, a female vocal here and see if we can hear any difference here. Let's just see what we got for... Inside. I wish there was some way to start this over again. Maybe okay, let's just loop this section here and see if uh, what the LA-3A will do for a vocal. I wish there was some way to start this over again. I wish there was some way to start this over again. Okay, no compression here. I wish there was some way to start this over again. Compression. I wish there was some way to start this over again. Listen to the word way without the compressor, how the word way pops way out of the mix and jumps right in your face where, and then the second time around, we'll do it with, with the compression. You'll hear how that word way, the word way will, will quiet down, control the peak. And again, on the female vocal, I can tend to hear a little bit more of that upper mid-range open up a little bit, okay? So it's a little bit more obvious than on, say, the acoustic guitar. So we're going to do this without compression first, and we're going to compress a little bit less than maybe what we were doing before. I wish there was some way to start this over again. Compressor. I wish there was some way to start this over again. Okay, let's go ahead and let's, let's level match. I'm going to compress a little bit more. I wish there was some way to start this over again. No compression. I wish there was some way to start this over again. With compression. I wish there was some way to start this over again. Okay, so it really tames that transient really nice on the word way. It almost sounds like it's not, and it, again, we're pushing this pretty hard now. We're doing about 10 dB, a little bit more of compression on when it hits that word, the word way. Um, and it doesn't sound compressed at all, which is kind of nice. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's see what happens if we uh, crank up the input a little bit more and just see and adjust the gain control. I wish there was some way to start this over again. I wish there was some way to start this over again. I wish there was some way to start this over again. I wish there was some way to start this over again. Compressor. I wish there was some way to start this over again. 
So even with that much compression, which is about 20 dB of compression in some points, we're limiting really at this point. Um, but you can also hear as well as controlling the transient, I can hear that when it's overly compressed like that, that I hear more of the chest voice. It's a little bit more warm, a little bit more bottom end. You can hear more of her chest in the vocal as opposed to just the high end, which on a female vocalist is, is, a, is nice because females tend to have a higher vocal register. They don't have as much of a chesty voice as typically as a male vocal would. So that's another way you can kind of play with this to kind of bring out some of that chest voice and some of that low warm warmth in the vocal in the vocal again without really making it sound like it's being compressed it just sounds smooth and even i wish there was <laughs> some way to start this over again i wish there was some way to start this over again so that's how you can use it on a female vocal so like with any compressor you know all compressors will will have, you know, you, you, the reason why you'll have different compressors in your toolkit is because not one of, it's not a one-trick pony where you could put this on anything and it sounds amazing. Um, it has its uses. We used it today on an, on an electric clean guitar, acoustic guitar, and a female vocal. And in all three cases, it sounded pretty good. Um, but you always want to be able to experiment and put different types of compressors on different types of tracks to see how it will behave. And again, it all comes down to personal taste. Uh, but this is a great example of another wonderful emulation by Universal Audio, the LA3A. Um, optical compressor, solid state, different from the LA-2A, which is more of a tube-based. So I hope this video was helpful, and I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the LA-3A today. For more plug-in reviews on Universal Audio, you can always visit my YouTube channel, or you can go out to my website, homerecordingmadeeasy.com. For more tips, tricks, and training on mixing, mastering, and everything home recording. Um, and until next time, this is David Vignola with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and visionrecordingstudios.com, and I will speak to you all soon. Take care.